Welcome back. So the rest of this week, or the second half of this week, I've been up at Brits the whole time, so Wednesday through today, and just making all the different parts that I need for the side sticks. Um, so the first thing I had to do on Wednesday was make the uh, the other side, the left-hand side stuff that I'd already made um, for that test that I did for the right-hand side, so that entailed these little short uh, square two brackets there, so I'm doing one of those and uh, you know cut it and then draw it and then I uh, also had to do the spacers uh, that space out the um, those V groove bearings from the brackets so this is just some 6061 uh, solid uh, rod that I drilled out for 3 sixteenths um, so you know they could space out those uh, V groove brackets or V, -gro v, -gro v groove bearings um, try saying that a bunch of times fast um, anyway uh, another thing I had to do too so there's the bearings and they're 3 16 and the hardware I'm using is AN3 and this has always been the case ever since I've been getting these bolts from from spruce and it's probably the same everywhere else they're supposed to be 3 16 bolts um, but they're exactly that diameter so it's almost like a press on fit for those bearings and in fact the bearing won't even go on the the bolt there so what I had to do was um, put the bolts up on the lathe there um, you know on, on both ends and then just you know take some of the material off which is really just sort of the, the allodyne coating I guess and maybe just a tiny little bit maybe just taking a few thou off enough to allow the bearing to slide on there because um, you know even the spacers that I drilled there that, it, that you saw even those wouldn't just slide onto the bolts so a combination of uh, hitting with the file first I'm just sort of showing you here in the video but hit it with the file first just to take a little bit off and then with the sandpaper to smooth it out and you see I've got the bolt in one way and here the bolts in the other way with the head in back in behind the lathe there but once I've done that then the bearing slides on it's still a super snug fit but it slides on so Again, just more little jobs that you have to do that you're not expecting to do that just take time. So I've had to do that with the eight bolts that I have there, um, you know, for both sides, for both sticks. And next up is these brackets out of FR4, half inch FR4 that are going to mount inside the existing carbon fiber brackets in the aircraft. So starting out uh, just on the bridge port here with a one and one eighth inch end mill just drilling the holes there in the middle and then I can take it over to the bandsaw and cut those out so and then you know I only had the two inch wide material so it doesn't actually fit exactly but that'll work fine and uh, same for these brackets here these are a uh, quarter inch uh, 6061 so again just cut the holes out first uh, while you've still got everything nice and square and you can put it in the vise and then uh, go from there and take it over to the bandsaw and cut everything else out. So as you see there, after running through that for a little while, uh, you end up with a lot of shavings on there and eventually it makes its way all the way through. And then I had to pop the actual um, sort of divot that's left, get stuck in the end of the end mill. So I had to disconnect the end mill from the bridge port there and pop pop out the little remainder before I could go and do the next one so again all this stuff's just time consuming and here's the other two brackets I had to do so same thing on these ones and uh, there's the these are other ones now the, so these are going to be the um, FR4 things that hold the bearings and so I had to create a tool see that one there that aluminum one that was one Brit had before and I had to create a larger one so that's what you see there in the lathe so I had to mill that and cut it and drill it and tap it and stuff so you can slide that on and then you tighten that bolt up and because it's got a sort of tapered head on it um, it uh, you know tightens on that and holds it in place so you can turn it on the lathe and that way you can get the outside nice and round and then once you've done that you can go back and put it in the lathe so you can work on the inside of it and because uh, I need to sort of hollow that out enough so it can fit um, these ball bearings inside there so this is just a case of taking it slow until you've taken off enough on this thing to make it round enough to go and put it in uh, back in the lathe and it doesn't take much effort but it's just again you've got to sort of take it slow because you've got sort of chunks sticking out 
and that's what it looks like once you've done that and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you've got sort of 90 percent of it off done and it, there was a couple that i left that you'll see a spot there that you can see on the top there there where i didn't bother doing it because as long as it you know you can fit the three um lay teeth around there is okay all right so here's these brackets that are done now those are cut just need to be cleaned up a little bit more um, before they can be uh, welded onto the square tube and here's one of those FR4 ones now. So as you can see, I'm kind of um, I'm cutting out the inside of it there so the bearing can sit into it. And this has to be done you know, pretty accurately because you want the bearing to sort of press into it um, and stay in there snug but not be overly tight or anything like that. And here's those other ones that I did um, that need to be sort of sanded now around the edges. And they're done, so take them over to the belt sander and get them done and there's that one that needs to be cut out now and then these two are some larger ones that i just did um, for those bearings and now moving on to the aluminum ones that fit into the inside of the bearing so i've got this round tube here which is close to the od and id that i needed there they are there so i cut four of those and that one i've already put on the lathe and just taken it down a bit so it can fit on the inside now these ones once that's been done on the lathe that'll be welded to one of those other flat brackets there um, so the whole um, the whole system there can run on those two small bearings and so here's me just again taking down another one of those ones carefully because in that again you have to be pretty careful to bring it down to just the right diameter so the bearing sort of pretty much needs to be sort of gently pressed on there so it doesn't sort of uh, slop around at all. And so once that's all done, here's a pile of parts that I've created that now all need to be assembled. So there's the other bracket from the one I didn't do yet, and at least the starting point of that. And then I got those guys that are, you know, two of those, one for each side, and then the corresponding ones for that that hook up to the aileron. So those will get welded onto the square tube, as you've seen in the previous videos. And then there's the secondary bracket, and then the little ones there that get welded onto the square tube where I can sort of bolt everything into place so I can sort of put it together um, without, you know, trying to jam it in there. You have to have some sort of steps. And there's a couple of those flanges there that are going to get welded onto those plates. And then there's the FR4 ones, and then there's the backing ones that go. So that goes onto there. That'll be get bonded on there um, or fastened on there. I'm not sure. And then I made larger ones there because those ones with the narrow wall, I wasn't that happy with them. So the larger ones will be on the end that's closest to the stick to take more loads. Uh, I didn't have really a lot of FR4 left over. And then these little square ones there, that's going to be the end cap that goes on the end of the sticks there that connects to the elevator and the tube I had wasn't large enough so I had to um, create those out of some square stock and then these are the uh, safety ones there got those and there's a whole bunch more of those in there so I mean you can see all the parts that I created that was in three days or two and a half days of work there and uh, just to show you how the bearings sit so that basically sits in there and it has to be sort of pressed in or just tapped in gently so I haven't put it in yet and then that aluminum one same thing has to be sort of pressed in there but that'll be welded to one of those flat pieces there for the aileron thing and then the, the other shorter flat one um, so that's how everything rides on that for ro uh, aileron rotation and there that's showing you in the larger one and see how that all fits in there those bearings are kind of neat though they're all small and then here's the end bearing there that connects to um, the elevator uh, torque tube so how that works is that's going to sit on that little flat plate there and then the end of the stick will sort of butt up against it and then you've got these two will actually be welded on to the, the flat end plate on the bottom there and then they still have to be drilled so they can connect to the end of the stick and lastly i'm still trying to source some 7075 um, I'd really want to go with that and I'm probably going to do the hard anodizing. I, I um, got that quoted at about $200 to do a batch of stuff. So that's something that will happen. And then finally, here's the uh, the last little bit here. It's the end of the stick there. So that still needs a little bit more work and I've got two of those that I'm working on. 
Anyway, that's the video for this week. Tune in again next week and see where I'm at. Thanks for watching.